So how kind is God? Have you ever thought about that? How kind is God? That's my topic. I want to preach on the God's loving kindness. We sing about his amazing grace. We sing about his mercy. We sing about the blood. We sing about his love. But have we really thought about his loving kindness? God's loving kindness. I'm going to give us three scriptures to just to hear in our reading. They should put them up on the board. The first one is, is uh, Psalm 63. Psalm 63, verse 3. This is my, one of my favorite verses. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Isaiah 63 and 7. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord. In the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us, in the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he had bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. His loving kindness will not run out. Amen? Amen. Then Jeremiah 32, 18. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompense the iniquities of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts, is his name. Hallelujah. What King David, the prophet Jeremiah, and the prophet Isaiah has in common is they all witness God's looking, God looking beyond the evil that the king has done and the evil that the nations have done and show them favor and compassion. You remember David committed murder and adultery. Remember the nations continually did evil in the sight of God. You remember that golden calf? The book of Judges said everyone did what was right in their own sight. They would sometimes refuse to repent, but God looked beyond that and shows loving kindness. So my question to you, have anybody in here not done evil in the sight of the Lord? I got another question for you. Have anybody in here not willingly disobeyed and broken the commandments of the Lord? I knew you'd be solid. Because we all the perfect candidates for God's loving kindness. Amen? Amen. Loving kindness is the love of God and the kindness of God working in unison to show you favor. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, talk back to me if you can. Loving kindness is when the character of God, which is love, and the attributes of God, which is kindness, are clearly working together. Amen? Amen. His love allows you to live freely without guilt or shame. But his kindness, hmm, his kindness keeps you moving forward without that heavy load and that burden of guilt and shame. Amen? Amen. Loving kindness. It keeps you from getting stuck. Hallelujah. Yes. Loving kindness. I like this. Loving kindness is like, it's like having grace and mercy topped with God's goodness mixed with the love and the favor of God. The whole package. Amen. The whole package. Yes. That's loving kindness. Yes. Loving kindness is when God, through his sovereignty, God, through his sovereignty, chooses to withhold severe punishment for your wrongdoing. For your wrongdoing. And we'll dig into that a little deeper. Because you got to remember, no sin goes unpunished. No sin goes unpunished. But with loving kindness, he can withhold that severe punishment. I'm going to show it to you shortly. You see, you can have God's grace, but not the loving kindness of God. Let me give you an example. God raises up. God raises up King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to discipline his people. He gave the pagan king grace, but he did not love the pagan king more than he loved Israel. You with me? He was more, he wasn't more, he, more kind to him than he was to Israel. Hallelujah. Yeah. But, that, but, 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 but God, again, God's loving kindness when he looked beyond your faults. 
got to understand is that the heathens and the unbelievers will experience the grace of God because it rains on the just and the unjust, right? But the heathen and the unbeliever will never experience the loving kindness of God because they do not recognize him as father nor recognize Jesus as king of kings and lord of lords. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for your salvation today. Thank God for your salvation because you know Jesus as Lord and Lord, King of Kings. You know him as the great I am. Thank God for your salvation today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, God, see, God's salvation yeah. is a free gift. Yeah. God's grace is sufficient. God's mercy endures forever and on new every morning. God's truth will set you free. God's love never fails. It's from everlasting to everlasting. God's love guarantees you a mansion in glory. Hallelujah. God's faithfulness is consistent, constant, and sure. But God's loving kindness, mm, his loving kindness, that's God's sovereign, faith, sovereign favor and compassion towards you. Hallelujah. God's loving kindness look beyond your faults and your shortcomings and still allow you to prosper. God's loving kindness look beyond the evil you willingly did in his sight and give you something beyond grace and mercy. Hallelujah. He gives you his compassion. God's compassion. God's compassion. Salah. Think on that. We know about God's peace. We know about his love, but his compassion. God's compassion. Hmm. Loving kindness is preserved for the elect of God. While, while I'm in this flesh, I need grace. While I'm in this flesh, I need mercy. But after this flesh dies and put into the grave, I need loving kindness. Hallelujah. I need loving kindness. That's why David said, because, love, because thy loving kindness is better than life, King David can say. Loving kindness goes beyond the grave. You hear me? Loving kindness goes beyond the grave. In fact, God's loving kindness escorts your soul into the arms of Christ. Not grace, not mercy, but loving kindness escorts you in the presence of God. When I walk in the spirit, when I walk in the spirit, I don't need grace because I'm in the spirit. But I need loving kindness because I need favor mixed with the love, God's love for me. Amen? So in other words, when you recognize God more than getting your light bill paid, more than your car note being met, then you can experience the loving kindness of God. Hallelujah. In other words, when you move God from, from just being a resource in your life to God being the source of your life, Hallelujah. you will then know the loving kindness yeah. of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, because God can be loving without being kind. You know that, right? But he cannot be kind without being loving because he is love. God is love. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Loving kindness. Loving kindness is when the doctors say they have done all that they can do. You're on the operating table and the doctor says, I have done all I can do. They sew you up and send you home to die. But God meets you at the front porch. That's loving kindness. That's loving kindness. Loving kindness when the repo man, that's the man come get your car when you can't pay your car note. Loving kindness when the repo man, instead of taking your car, he pays your car note. That's loving kindness. Amen. Loving kindness when you're six months behind on your mortgage, but you're still in the house. That's not grace. Grace period passed on the 15th three months ago. You're still in the house. That's loving kindness. That's God's loving kindness at work. Loving kindness has kicked in. So if goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, then loving kindness has gone before me. Loving kindness surrounds me because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. Ask Joseph in the pit. Ask Daniel in the line you're in. Ask Moses at the Red, Red, at the Red Sea. God's loving kindness. I tell you, I'm not going to be long before you. I'm halfway done. 
But let's dig a little deeper. Through God's sovereignty, he chooses to withhold severe punishment for your wrongdoing. Hallelujah. I'm going to use King Saul and King David. Let me tell the Saul story over here. You remember King Saul? He was still head and shoulders above everybody else, and the people wanted the king. So God gave him a king. God gave him Saul. And God gives Saul a, a mission. Go and kill all the Amalekites because they did not show Israel kindness when I brought them out of Egypt. He said, kill them all from the oldest to the youngest, even the children. Don't stop there. Kill the livestock. God wanted to, 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 to get rid of the Amalekites totally. But Saul, he goes down there. He saved the king. He takes the finest of the sheep to the side. Here comes Samuel. Samuel hears the sheep. Bah, bah. He said, what's that I hear? Then Saul said, well, the people wanted to keep the sheep for a sacrifice. Well, the king is still alive. And, so, and, and Samuel say, don't you understand obedience is better than a sacrifice? So he goes and he kills the king and he, and he, and he, and he slays all the livestock. Then he tells Saul this here. It's in 1 Samuel 15. You got it back there? Bring it up and they can see it. 1 Samuel 15, verse 26. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return unto thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of the mantle, the, 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 the skirt of his mantle, and he rent it. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord has rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and, and has given it to a neighbor, to, to, to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he shall repent. And it goes on to verse 35, it says, And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king. And if you read the last of, of 1 Samuel, Saul dies a horrible death. His sons, his three sons are killed by the Philistine. And, and Saul said he wanted his servant to thrust him with the sword because he didn't want the Philistine to abuse him. So, but, but his servant wouldn't do it, so Saul fell on the sword and killed himself. But yet the Philistines still come and cut his head off. Let me come over here and talk about King David. You remember King David? It say on the day that the men went out to war, King David stayed home. Up on the top of the roof, he sees who? Bathsheba. And his lustful eyes began to want her. He sent for her. He gets her. He brings her to his house. She gets pregnant. And now the plot thickens. Uriah, her husband, is in the army. He said, bring Uriah home so he can have with relation, thank you, <laughs> with, with his wife. So make him think that you got a pregnant. But you're right, he's, he's observing. I, how can I do that when my fellow is out there, you know? So he can't do it. So, so he said, well, here, here. I'm going to send word to the captain, put your ride at the front of the war so he can die. So David commits adultery, murder, lies, covetousness. Look at first. Samuel 12, now 2 Samuel 12, and let me show you what Nathan says to, what Nathan says, the prophet Nathan, he comes to, to David in verse 13. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put, thy, put away thy sin. Thou should not die. Mm. It goes on. He, he, had, he had trouble in his household. He paid for his sin. The child, God allowed the child to die. But at the end of David's life, 
He died of old age. He didn't die of murder or nothing like that. He died of old age. It said that, that his eyes, that, that, that yet he was, put, his, his days was, put, he died with the fullness of days. Eyes not dim. So what was the difference? What was the difference? Here's the deal. Mm. King Saul did not do what God said completely. God rejects him. God takes the kingdom from him. King Saul dies a horrible death. God did not show King Saul loving kindness. King David commits adultery, murder, covetousness, disobeyed God by numbering the people. He joins up with the Philistine, yet God shows him loving kindness. He dies of old age. So when I, when I read both of those stories, I thought about the scales of justice. Have you ever seen the scales of justice? They have a balance. Aren't you glad there's no scale for your sin? Aren't you glad there's no scale for your sin? It is obvious to me that David's sin outweighs Saul's sin. If we would put your sin on a sin on a scale, how much would they weigh? How much would your sin weigh? Ah. You got to understand sin is not big or small. Sin is sin, amen? Sin is sin. That's why you need grace. That's why you need mercy. Again, King David's sins would easily outweigh Saul's sin. Mm. But here's the deal. King David repented. And I think you said it in your prayer. King David repented. Amen? So it was not favoritism. It was loving kindness. It was God loving kindness. So, here, so here's the deal to receive God loving kindness. A repentant heart and, re, and a relationship is a prerequisite. A be respiquist. I got to say it that way. Thank you. Be respiquist. Anyway, to receive the loving kindness of God. Amen. A repentant heart and a relationship is required to receive the loving kindness of God. Mm. So when you see the word loving kindness throughout the Bible, the majority of them is in Psalm. They're not going to go up there. I'm just going to roll through them. If you want these scriptures, I got I do a printout. I didn't print it out, but I have it. We can make some copies of it. But in Saul, in Psalm 17, verse 7 through 8, it says, loving kindness is marvelous. In Psalm 26, verse 3, it says, for thy loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. Psalm 36, verse 7, says, loving kindness is excellent. Psalm 36, verse 10, says, loving kindness is continuous. Psalm 40, verse 10, says, loving kindness is cannot be concealed, it preserves. Psalm 42 said, the, the Lord will command his loving kindness. Psalm 69, verse 16 said, loving kindness is good. But Psalm 88, verse 11, if you got your Bibles, even in death, the loving kindness of the Lord is declared. It says, shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, in the grave or thy faithfulness in destruction? Psalms 92, verse 1 and 2 said, loving kindness should be on display every day. Psalms 103, verse 4, loving kindness is like a crown. It says this here, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 143, verse 8 said, loving kindness can be heard. The verse says, cause, cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust Cause me to know the way within I shall walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Psalm 138, verse 1 and 2 say, praise the Lord for his loving kindness. It says, I will worship, I will worship towards the, the holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thy has magnified thy word above thy name. Jeremiah 9, verse 24. It says, but... Let him that glory it, glory in this, that he understands and he knows me. And I am the Lord which ex exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For these things I delight, says the Lord. He delights in loving kindness. He delights in judgment. He delights in righteousness. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 30, 31 and 3 said, The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, 
I have drawn thee that loving kindness will draw you. So in other words, you won't find the word loving kindness in the New Testament. It's only a tribute to the God the Father. And I thought about that. I said, why loving kindness is not in the New Testament? Could it be? Could it be you won't find loving kindness in the New Testament because God loving kindness is demonstrated through the person of Jesus Christ. God's loving kindness is demonstrated through the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is God's loving kindness towards you, towards you, towards, towards me, towards every believer. For the, Jesus is God's loving kindness for the true worshiper. Hallelujah. I'll tell you I'm almost done. Because he was loving when he used the little lad lunch to feed the multitude. He was kind when he sent the little lad home with more than he came with. He was loving when he stopped the people from stoning, stoning the woman caught up in adultery. He was kind when he didn't accuse her, and re, but he removed her guilt. He was loving when he freed Mary Magdalene from all her demons. He was kind when he revealed himself to her at the empty tomb. He was loving when he raised Lazarus from the grave. He was kind when he said, take the grave clothes off. He was loving when Judas gave him a kiss of betrayal in the garden of Gethsemane. He was kind when he healed the soldier ear after Peter had cut it off in the garden of Gethsemane. He was loving when they nailed spikes in his hands. He was loving when they nailed spikes in his feet. He was loving when they pressed that, thorn, that crown of thorns in his skull. He was loving, but he was kind when he said, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was loving when they pierced him in the side. He was kind when he forgave the thief on the cross. He was loving when he hung his head and gave up the ghost. He was kind when he stayed in the grave three days. His kindness was on display when he rose again, amen. His loving kindness was on display when he rose again, amen. He rose, that's loving kindness. He rose, that's grace. He rose, that's mercy. He rose, that's victory for you and I all wrapped up and together in loving kindness. Thank you, Jesus. He rose. He was loving when he saved you by grace through faith. His kindness will be your mansion he has prepared for you. I go and prepare a place for you that where I am you can be also. That's his kindness. Hallelujah. That's worth thanksgiving to me. Amen. Oh, somebody will give him praise. That's worth thanksgiving. I go and prepare a place for you that where I am you can be, you will be also. Thank him for getting out the grave. Thank him for loving you. Thank him for dying for you. Thank him for looking beyond your faults and supplying your need. Thank him for saving you from a burning hell. Thank him. Thank him for his loving kindness. Because that loving kindness is better than life. My lips are praised. I'm done.